what is this random variable? Is it continuous or is it discrete? The time it takes, so time is your random variable. Time it takes to run a mile. Remember that it is a continuous random variable. We cannot count time. The second one, the number of problems assigned for the homework. The key word here is the number of. As long as you see the number of, it means that you can easily count it and it is a discrete random variable. The lifetime, lifetime of an automobile tire. The lifetime, it can be two days, it can be three days, it can be one week, a month, two years, five years. It is a continuous random variable. It has different measurements. Suppose you have the following normal distribution. How do you identify the mean and standard deviation? Remember the properties that you discussed at the beginning of the class. The balancing point is just located here. So we expect the mean to be 15. What about the standard deviation? Remember how we divide up the horizontal line into equal distance. One unit, one unit, one unit. 15 to 16, 16 to 17, 17 to 18. On the left-hand side, 15 to 14, 14 to 13, 13 to 12. So the mean is 15 with standard deviation equals to one. The correct answer is two. We don't see that much of a variability here, everybody. The balancing point is 15, and you don't have a wide graph. This is a very narrow graph. What's the meaning of that? As you can see, the standard deviation or variability is very small. Which leads us to the next question. Which statement below accurately describes how the standard deviation impacts the shape of a normal curve? The very first one says, hey, as the standard deviation or variability increases, the normal curve gets wider. Seems to be correct, because as long as you have more variability, you expect the graph to distribute it all over the horizontal line, like salary or housing prices. You have variability there, so we expect the graph to be wide. Two says the normal curve is centered at the standard deviation. No, this is not correct. It is centered at the mean, either mu or x bar. So this is not correct. Number three says, as the standard deviation increases, it means that as the variability increases, the normal curve gets narrower. No, no, that's not correct. As long as you have more variability, it means that the graph gets wider, not narrower. And finally, the standard deviation has no impact on the shape of the normal curve. This is wrong. As long as you have variability, you expect to have a wider graph. So it has an important impact on the shape of the graph. As the standard deviation increases, the normal curve gets wider. When this happens, the normal curve becomes wider and the peak of the curve becomes lower. Empirical rule. If you have a normal distribution, you have nice rules to basically find the probability or the percentage of the data that are bounded between different values. So the balancing point is the mean, x bar or mu. On the right hand side, you have x bar plus one standard deviation. Then x bar plus two standard deviations. From x bar to this point, you have two standard deviations. From x bar to this point, you have three standard deviations. That's why you see x bar plus one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations. On the left-hand side, x bar 
minus one standard deviation and then x bar minus two standard deviations. On the left, they start subtracting. And finally, x bar minus three standard deviations. You have one, two, three standard deviations on the left-hand side of x bar. It happens that 68% of the data are within one standard deviation. 95% of the data are within two standard deviations from this point to this point. And finally, 99.7% of the data are bounded between three standard deviations. You can break this down into smaller pieces. 68% is divided up into 34%, another 34%. If you add these together, get 68% back. 68% plus 13.5%, another 13.5% gives you 95%. And finally, 95% plus 2.35% plus another 2.35% gives you 99.7%. So this is the summary of empirical rule or 68, 95, 99.7 rule. For data sets with normal distribution or approximately symmetric and well-shaped, the standard deviation has the following characteristics. First of all, about 68% of the data lie within one standard deviation of the mean, about 95% of the data lie within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% of the data lie within three standard deviations of the mean. Why it is important? Take a look. Adult male heights are approximately normal in their distribution. The mean of the data is 69, with standard deviation 3. The figure below shows this distribution. The vertical lines are one standard deviation apart. So there is just the distance between these are one standard deviation, which is 3. So 3 units here, 3 units here. These are the distances, three units here, another three units here, three units here, and it continues. The same distance. In the table below, enter the values that correspond to the heights that are one, two, and three standard deviations from the mean. Remember from the empirical rule, you have the mean as the balancing point. So the mean or mu is the balancing point. To the right side of the mean, you're adding sigma. To the left side of the mean, you're subtracting sigma. So since mean is 69, mu is 69. 69 plus 3 gives you 72. So 69 plus 3, 72. 69 minus 3 gives you 66. 72 plus 3 gives you 75, and 66 minus 3 gives you 63. 75 plus 3 gives you 78, and finally, 63 minus 3 gives you 60. One standard deviation to the left, two standard deviations to the left, three standard deviations to the left. One standard deviation to the right, two standard deviations to the right, three standard deviations to the right. So you can basically rewrite these numbers on the horizontal line. The balancing point, 69, with three standard deviations to the right, three standard deviations to the left. Now we can use this information to answer the following questions. Suppose you have the standard deviation, and the question says, hey, what is this little area down here? 68% of the data are within one standard deviation, 95% of the data are within two standard deviations, and we know that 99.7% of the data are within three standard deviations. But what is this little area on the left and the right? Remember that the whole area is 100%. This one is 100% of the area below the curve. Now one minus 
99.7% of the area gives you this very small area, which is 0 0.003. So A plus H is 0 0.003. If you do the division, you get these little areas as 0 0.0015. So these little areas are very small. And the numbers assigned to them or the probability assigned to them are 0 0.0015. With the same discussion, with the same argument, you can easily find C and F. Remember that 68% of the data is within one standard deviation, and you already know that 95% of the data or area are within two standard deviations. So since we can do the subtraction between 95% of the data and this little area, which is 68% of the data, you get the remaining area, 27%. 27% of the data are divided up into two pieces, one piece for C and one piece for F. So 27% divided by two gives you 0.135 or 13.5%. So C and D, each one has 13.5% of the remaining area. Again, with the same argument, you can easily calculate the remaining areas. The area of region G is small. It is 0 0.0235. Why is that? Because you already know what is the area within three standard deviations. It is 99.7%. You also know that this area within two standard deviations, which is 95%. So the remaining area, which is divided up between B and G, is equal to 0 0.047. So G plus B gives you this little area. This is G plus B. So if I divide it by 2, I can get the area for each one half. It is 0 0.0235 or 2.35%. And finally, if I ask you to find the probability that X is bounded between 72 and 78, 72 is just right here, and 78 is just here. So this is on horizontal line. But when we are asking for the probability, we're looking at these areas. What is this area? It is 0.135. What is this area? This area is 0 0.0235. If you add these together, again, 0.135, which is the area here, and 0 0.0235, which is the area here, if you add them together, the probability or area is 0 0.1585, or about 16%. So if you approximate this, you get about 16% chance that a randomly selected man's height is between 72 and 78 inches.